Hello everyone. The topic of this presentation is an efficient error estimation technique for pruning approximate data flow graphs in design space exploration. Here is the outline of my talk. First, I will talk about the introduction, then I will explain the proposed method, I will present the exper experimental results, and finally I will conclude this presentation. Introduction Energy efficiency has become one of the major concerns of recent years. The reasons include that the computing industry has shifted its focus from personal computers to embedded and mobile devices such as cell phones, and these devices have limited battery capacities. Another example for portable devices are sensors, like surveillance cameras, and once they are installed, usually you do not want to change their batteries so often. Energy efficiency is also an important factor in data centers. With the recent growth of deep learning applications, data centers are supposed to store huge amount of data, which means that they consume large amount of energy, which also have an environmental impact like carbon dioxide emission. Last but not least, we know that Moore's law and Denard scaling are coming to an end, and we cannot rely uh, more on uh, transistor scaling for performance improvements. And these are the reasons why designers are really concerned about energy efficiency. The good news is that there are so many applications in the domain of recognition, mining, and synthesis which are error resilient. This means that these applications can tolerate some amount of inaccuracies at their output. The reasons that these applications are error tolerant uh, is that the users of these applications, which are human, cannot detect small imperfections at the output. The other reason is that there is no single golden solution for these applications, and they are multiple good acceptable solutions. And finally, the inputs to these applications themselves are noisy and redundant. Considering the error resiliency of the mentioned applications, one solution to energy efficiency is the use of approximate computing. Approximate computing is a new design paradigm which abandons exactness in computation in favor of improvements in energy efficiency. It can be applied at different levels of the design abstraction, for example at behavioral level, architecture level, and circuit level. One example for circuit level approximation is that given an exact uh, netlist of a circuit, we can uh, simplify it by removing some of its gates. Uh, an important application of uh, approximation at circuit level is the use of approximate arithmetic units, such as approximate adders and multipliers. One important point here is that there is always a limit for any kind of approxim approximation, which, uh, which is because there is a minimum acceptable quality of service which is set by the user of the application. So if we consider a given input application at higher level, it can be represented by a data flow graph where nodes correspond to operations and edges capture the data dependency between the operations. In this world, we consider operations to be arithmetic units. If we replace some of the exact nodes with their approximate ones taken from a high-level library of approximate arithmetic module, we will end up with an approximate data flow graph. Applying different degrees of approximation to different DFG nodes results in a set of different ADFG configurations where each one of them have different design matrix like energy consumption and quality of service. Here we have drawn some of the approximate DFG configurations with their corresponding energy consumption and output error. The important point is that the designer is only interested in the ADFG configurations which result in the best trade-off between energy consumption and quality of service, which will be called the Pareto frontier of the design space. In order to obtain those uh, configurations, we need to search the design space by design space exploration heuristics, which are most of the time iterative heuristics. For an ADFG configuration, the quality of the output can be obtained in two ways. One is the use of Monte Carlo simulation, where a set of input test vectors are applied to both the approximate and the exact design, and the exact and approximate results are compared to each other. This method, however, is really time-consuming. The other method is the use of computational estimation models, which means that we use analytical or computational techniques to estimate the error at the output of the design. Uh, the challenge here is that we need to find efficient and at the same time accurate techniques for this method to be helpful. 
Error metrics that has been used in this work contain error distance, which is the difference between exact and approximate results, relative error distance, which is uh, the ratio of error distance by the exact value, mean relative error distance, mean absolute relative dis uh, error distance, and based on the relative error distance formula, we can obtain the approximate value based on relative error and the exact value. Proposed method. In this work, we propose an error estimation technique which estimates the mean absolute relative error distance at the output of an ADFG configuration. The goal of this technique is to limit the number of simulations of the ADFG configurations which are visited in an iterative DSE framework. The proposed method has two steps which will be explained in the following slides. The first step uh, pre-characterizes the error at the operation level and at the second step the error obtained from the first step is propagated in an ADFG configuration to reach the primary outputs. The first step is the pre-characterization step. We said before that for the DFG operations we only consider arithmetic units. So for the arithmetic modules in the library which consist of exact or approximate ones and we only consider two operand modules, this step has to be performed separately for all of them. The goal of this step is to estimate the mean absolute relative error distance at the output of a given module based on the error of the operands and the degree of approximation of the module. So at the end of this step for the given module we will end up with a lookup table which estimates the error based on the entries of the lookup table. This step has three separate stages which will be in, uh, explained in details in the, in the following slides. So since output error of a module is highly input dependent, the error should be obtained for different intervals of the operand. Therefore, we consider the full range of the operands and we will uh, divide it into intervals of fixed size 256. And we will perform the pre-characterization step in each of these intervals. So for each operand, we have two errors that are given to us. One is the positive and the other one is the negative mean relative error distance, which are shown by alpha j plus and alpha j minus for operand j. Next, a set X of random test vectors are independently generated. And we need to consider that for each operand to be generated, the value should be chosen from the specified interval range of CJ. And next, based on the formula we have seen before, and based on the value of the error given to us, we will obtain the approximate value of the uh, operand. So we have to consider that we do not want to overestimate or underestimate this value. Therefore, first we will generate a random vector, a, a random binary number. If that value is zero, we will use the positive value of alpha j. And if that value is uh, one, we will consider the negative value. So at the end of this stage, we have generated the exact and approximate test vectors which should be applied to the module. At the second stage, we generate the exact and approximate values for the output of the module. So we apply x to the exact implementation of the module and we apply x prime to the module itself in order to obtain s and s prime. And at the final stage from s and s prime, we go and separately generate the relative error values and we generate the re vector. We average the positive and negative values of re's to generate alpha plus of output and alpha minus of the output. And we finally average the absolute values of re's to generate alpha absolute of the output. We also take a record of alpha of the maximum values of positive, uh, positive REs and negative REs for the future use, and, and we also uh, store all these values in a lookup table. All, the in, uh, all these values are used for the next step of the proposed framework. So for the second step, the general idea is to use the lookup tables generated from the previous step to propagate the extracted error values in an ADFG configuration to reach the final output. I will explain this step with an example shown here. So in this DFG, there are three adder nodes, and uh, we will uh, substitute this adder with an approximate adder called lower part or adder, represented as LOA, which has two least significant bits approximated. So I will uh, present uh, an LOA adder with k least significant bits approximated as LOA k from now on. And in this work, we have considered image processing applications. So the primary inputs are always in the interval of 0 and 256 because they are coming from pixels of an image. Actually, this is the reason why we have considered the full range of input operands to be divided into sub-ranges of 256 size in the first step of the uh, proposed method. 
So in this example, we start from the DFG nodes, which have primary inputs as their operands. So in this case, it will be adder A and adder B. And the reason is that for these adders, uh, we know the interval of the operands. They are always with, uh, within 0 and 256, so they are always in uh, interval number 0. And also primary inputs carry no error. So the error for the operands are also 0 for adder A and adder B. This means that uh, with the lookup table of LOA2 given, we can extract the alpha O values of adder A and adder B. Next, we traverse the ADF gene topological order and process the nodes where the predecessor nodes have been evaluated. In this case, adder C. Since operands to C are coming from outputs of A and B, and since A and B were both adding two numbers between 0 and 256, so outputs of A and B will be always between 0 and 512 which means that the operands of C will be either in cluster 0 or cluster 1. The other thing is that the operand errors of C are coming from the output errors of A and B. Since they are two different values for the interval of operands to C, for the two operands of C, they are four different input clusters with similar operand error values, which result in different output errors for C. For each combination, the corresponding alpha OCM value is extracted from the given lookup tables. And the final alpha OC is obtained from these equations. For alpha plus, alpha minus, and alpha absolute value, the corresponding alpha OCM values are just average. And for alpha plus max and alpha minus max, we find the maximum value for the corresponding alpha OCM values. So this is the general idea. We generally, if we have a larger DFG, we traverse the DFG in topological order. When we reach a node, we need to find the clusters and open errors of the operands based on the predecessor nodes. And for each of the combinations, we can extract the value from the lookup table and use these equations to find the final output error of that node. Finally, the proposed error estimation technique is integrated in an iterative DSE framework. So in the DSE algorithm, once an ADFG configuration is visited, instead of using the simulator, the proposed estimator is used to obtain the quality of service of the ADFG configuration. So with the new DSE framework, the Pareto frontier of the design space is extracted, which trades off energy consumption and ma mean absolute relative error distance at the output of the ADFG. There are some minor modifications that need to be performed in order to improve the final Pareto frontier. So first, for image processing applications, peak signal to noise ratio is a more interesting metric than mean absolute relative error distance. So the solution is that uh, after the modified DSE framework generates the Pareto frontier, we go and simulate the ADFG configurations again to obtain their corresponding PSNR values. The second issue is that when we use lookup tables to estimate the mean absolute relative error distance of the output of the ADFG configurations, because lookup tables have discrete values, we may end up with a lot of ADFG configurations with a similar estimated value for the output error. And that might uh, damage the accuracy of our method. So the solution is that we will add some extra configurations based on a specific format to the obtain Pareto frontier and do the simulations on those uh, configurations too. Experimental results. The error estimation technique is integrated in the DSE framework of EGON, which is an iterative heuristic. The benchmarks considered for this experiment are chosen from image processing domain, which include smoothing kernel and Sobel edge detector. Both of the benchmarks only have adders and subtractors as arithmetic units. The framework is implemented in Python and the simulations are performed with VCS. The inputs are considered as uh, images and uh, PSNR is considered as the output accuracy metric. So in this slide, the extracted Pareto frontier of the no uh, trade-off between normalized energy and PSNR values uh, obtained by uh, the um, modified uh, design space exploration is per uh, pre uh, presented for the smoothing benchmark. For the first experiment, the DFG nodes were implemented as exact or LOA4, where W is equal to 2. For the second experiment, uh, DFG nodes could be exact, LOA2 or LOA4, so W is equal to 3. Second stands for simulated EGON, which means that in the DSE, uh, any 
approximate DFG configuration which was visited was also simulated. But for MEGON, uh, it stands for mo model-based EGON, which means that the error estimation technique is performed. For the first case, which is PF1, the extra configurations were not added based on modification 2. However, for PF2, those extra configurations are added for improving accuracy, which was explained in modification number 2. So from the results, we can see that SEGON, uh, which was obviously uh, expected, results in the better Parator frontier, and it uh, dominates all the other cases. MEGON PF2 generates better results than MEGON PF1 for both the cases because uh, it has more number of uh, ADFG configurations simulated. But at the same time, we can see that MEGON PF2 is almost similar to SEGON, which means that our technique is a good one. This slide shows the extracted Pareto frontier for the Sobel benchmark. The results are almost similar to smoothing, which means that uh, Segon generates the better results uh, than Megon PF2, than Megon PF1, as was expected before. And we can see that for Megon PF2, it's almost similar to Segon for both the cases. In this table, some of the useful results are summarized for both the smoothing and Sobel benchmark for both the experiments performed. N stands for the number of DFG nodes, simulate stands for the number of simulations performed in the DSE framework, reduction is the runtime reduction versus uh, with respect to SEGON framework, and PF stands for the number of uh, designs located on the Pareto frontier. So as it was expected before, SEGON has a larger number of simulations being performed. Uh, between PF2 and PF1, PF1 has higher runtime reduction, which was expected because it has lower number of simulations being performed. But we have seen that uh, the quality of the extracted Pareto frontier is worse than PF2. Also, the other important thing is that between Sobel and smoothing, the runtime reduction in Sobel is higher than smoothing uh, in most of the cases. For example, here we have 98% and a uh, runtime reduction. The reason is that Sobel benchmark has larger number of DFG nodes, which means that it has a larger design space. And uh, performing this DSE means that we have to do a lot of uh, ADFG configuration visit visiting. So that's why uh, this technique is more important and useful for DFGs with larger number of nodes. Conclusions. In this work, we propose the technique to estimate the error at the output of an ADFG configuration. The technique was also integrated in a DSE framework to reduce the number of simulations which are performed uh, for the ADFG configurations visited within a DSE algorithm. So the proposed technique has two steps. In the first step, a pre-characterization step is performed and a set of lookup tables were obtained. And these lookup tables are used in the second step to propagate the error within the ADFG configuration to reach the final output. The efficacy of the proposed framework was assessed using two image processing applications, and it was shown that the modified DSE generated good enough Pareto frontiers, but at the same time, it takes less time compared to using simulations. Thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer them. Next, we traverse the ADFG in topological order and process the nodes where the predecessor nodes have been evaluated. In this case, adder C. Since all primes to C are coming from outputs of A and B, and since A and B were both adding two numbers between 0 and 256, so outputs of A and B will be always between 0 and 512, which means that the all primes of C will be either in cluster 0 or cluster 1. The other thing is that the all prime errors of C are coming from the output errors of A and B. Since they are two different values for the interval of O-prime to C, 
for the two opens of C. They are four different input clusters with similar open error values, which result in different output errors for C. For each combination, the corresponding alpha OC M value is extracted from the given lookup tables. And the final alpha OC is obtained from these equations. For alpha plus, alpha minus, and alpha absolute value, the corresponding alpha OCM values are just average. And for alpha plus max and alpha minus max, we find the maximum value for the corresponding alpha OCM values. So this is the general idea. We generally, if we have a larger DFG, we traverse the DFG in topological order. When we reach a node, we need to find the clusters and open errors of the opens based on the predecessor nodes, and for each of the combinations, we can extract the value from the lookup table and use these equations to find the final output error of that node.